Adultza Sitsta, Celestialot Sitsta. My ancestral names are Adultza and Celestialot. My English name is Anna. I'm a Swinomish tribal member and we are on Swinomish tribal lands. We will be talking about the moon of the sacred time. Late December through early January is the moon of the sacred time. This moon is one of the final moons of the one yearly cycle and the first of the next cycle and this moon signals a time for renewal and rebirth. This is a time for learning spiritual and cultural traditions from elders around the Longhouse Fire. Sea run cutthroat trouts, blackmouth salmon, and steelhead are fished during winter months. Shellfish are collected during nighttime low tides. Activities focus on nighttime clam digs and cedar weaving during this moon. So I'll be working with cedar and you can use either red or yellow cedar. And after you harvest it, you can go ahead and start the soaking process. You can soak it either overnight or for a few hours. And after you do so, it'll become very malleable and you'll be able to peel it a lot easier and you can make the strips as big or as little as you want and depending on how big or little you make your strips will decide how big your rose will be. So you make a really big rose or you can make smaller roses which we'll be making today and again our people have been using cedar for a variety of different things. You can make baskets, you can make regalia, and again, you can also make roses. And in Swinomish, we like to use them for celebrations and for ceremonies alike. You'll see them at graduations, you'll see them at memorials, and you'll also see them at funerals, or just as simple gifts that you wanna to give to someone. So to do so for the smaller rows, I'm just gonna take two pieces about the same size. I just cut these. And then after you do that, you're just gonna fold them one over the other and after you make this X, again, you'll just continue that process of folding and kind of spinning at the same time. And as you do this, it'll start to resemble a rose. So you're gonna start with the center, like moving outwards. So the more cedar you have, the bigger rose it will be. And something else that I really wanted to note about cedar is ethical harvesting practices. So it's really important that you talk to someone who's very familiar with cedar before you work with it and that you don't just go into the mountains and start peeling away at any cedar tree that you see. Um, you should, again, get permission from whatever tribe it is that you're harvesting from. And then secondly, you should also be able to wrap your arms around the tree before harvesting. And each cedar tree can only be harvested from once in its lifetime or should be. So those are some simple things to remind yourself and to remember as you go out and harvest. It's a very simple, uh, very simple process and you can make a lot of them and you can just finish it off by tying it with another piece of cedar or with a piece of rope or string or whatever else you have um, available. So that is how you make a cedar rose. Me and my friend were driving around our rest one day and his grandmother uh, popped her head out the door and says, time to go get mussels, grandson. He said, okay. So we took off, went to Whidbey Island, uh, where the mussels grow out there and got some, got a bunch of mussels. And uh, I was wondering, well, what are you gonna do with it? And then he just, you know, took it down to the beach, uh, and got some round stones and put it on there, uh, built a fire on it, got the rocks really hot, then put the mussels on top of it and covered it. And then after, afterwards, uh, the community members got word of it, and so the people, uh, a lot of the tribal members come down, you know, to eat the mussels. And they say this used to be a common thing a long time ago, but uh, maybe since we, we start losing access to different resources off reservation, uh, <clears throat> it was something that kind of fell by the wayside. But now our government is working for getting access, you know, to different clam beds in our primary area, so. Uh, my friend's mother was, she was busy sitting down there eating a bunch of mussels and she was eating really fast. Then I see her go into her little purse, pop a little pill. So I went and asked her and she says, 
oh, I'm allergic to mussels. I'm going to get sick here pretty soon. I said, it's going to make you sick while you're eating it. She says, because my spirit demands it. It was necessary for her spirit, and she knew that, so she, she was willing to take that chance. So she was popping Benadryl like candy, you know, <laughs> and trying to counteract that. And, you know, when I tell that, that one to, you know, non-Indians, they just go, <gasps> because, you know, it, it's so foreign of a concept to them that uh, food would be uh, necessary, you know, that it, it does more than a physical function, it has a, a traditional function, spiritual function. This story is told by Roger Fernandez from Lower Elwha on the teachings of cedar. A long time ago, there was a tall and strong grandma cedar tree. One day, a little tree, who was her grandson, began to grow next to her. She happily watched him grow and grow. She was also able to protect him from the wind, the hot summer sun, and the hungry deer. When he was lonely, she called the birds to his branches to keep him company. So he grew healthy and strong until he was bigger than his grandma. Grandma was getting very old and she needed protection and care. Grandson Cedar was able to protect grandmother from the strong wind, the hot sun, and the hungry deer. He was also able to call the birds to her branches when she missed her old tree friends. One day she said, grandson, don't worry about me, I'm old now, take care of yourself. Do not worry about me anymore. But he said, Grandma, when I was little, you protected me from the strong wind, the summer's hot sun, and the hungry deer. And when I was lonely, you called the birds to me so I'd have company. Grandma, you did all these things for me, and now I will do them for you. And so, grandson Cedar Tree took care of his beloved grandmother, Cedar Tree. Some reflection questions are, what does it look like to be gentle and kind? Can I receive generosity and kindness with an open heart? And how can I practice generosity in my life right now?